Now, before on this channel, I have recommended a pair of the Sonos 5s as the best stereo setup you can get for $1,000. US The sound is powerful and the bass isn't lacking at all even without a subwoofer. Sound stage is great and you're going to get 6 speakers in one Sonos 5 powered by 6 individual amps which means in the stereo pair you're going to get 12 drivers in the stereo setup. But with the launch of the Sub Mini, which is right here, some of you might be wondering if pairing with the Sub Mini to a pair of the Sonos One SL might actually deliver the same sound as a pair of the Sonos 5s or maybe even better. So let's find out today. Now, as usual in my videos, I will give you the answer right up front so you don't have to stay for the entire video if you don't have the time to do so. Now, I've been known to go on and on when it comes to audio products, especially wireless audio products or anything that runs on electricity for that matter, like what I'm doing now. Now, the Sonos 5 is still an overall better sounding setup. The bass, surprisingly, is better from a pair of Sonos 5s than from the Sonos 1s, even if they are paired with a sub mini. Now, the overall sound from the Sonos 5 is more pleasing and there are extra benefits. Two extra benefits that you get out of the Sonos 5s. First, you will get an audio input jack. That's round at the back. I don't want to move this around. Which means that there's an extra way of getting music into the Sonos system. And two, you save one PowerPoint because if you are using the Sonos One setup in the stereo pair, they will take up two PowerPoints and the Sub Mini will take up another. Now on the surface, it actually means something else which I'll discuss later and it's got to do with placement and face. Now, but there are also downsides to the Sonos 5s and there are two downsides. First, there isn't a version of the Sonos 5s with a mic. So if you're going to need any form of smart assistance or voice control, you are out of luck. And second downside is the price. They cost more, even more than a pair of the Sonos 1SLs, adding the Sub Mini to the mix. So you have some time to stay around. Let's dive in a little bit deeper into this discussion. Now, I've done some frequency response sweeps to give you further concrete evidence to what I'm claiming. Now, when you're here on this channel, it is science-based, not just my own opinion, because I'm just trying to justify the money that I spend on all the sound systems that I've bought. Okay, so let's get to some of the pros and cons, get them out of the way before we get to the frequency response sweeps. Now, as I've mentioned, the fives, they have the advantage of having an input port. So if you're trying to get sound from, say, a turntable or record player into the Sonos ecosystem, this is one way that you can do it. Otherwise, you have to spend money on either the Sonos amp or the Sonos port to get input from analog systems, which will cost a lot more. Now, this is one of the features that makes the Sonos 5s very, very flexible. But you do have to note that whenever you try to get analog signals into the Sonos ecosystem, you end up with a little bit of delay. So if you're thinking of getting TV sounds into the Sonos 5s through the auxiliary 3.5mm input jack, you will get some lip sync issues even if you set the latency to the lowest of 75 milliseconds. Now, I also did mention that you're going to need three power points to power up the two Sonos ones and the Sub Mini. Now, of course, if placement and power points are not an issue, or rather if they are an issue, then this is a no-go for the setup. The Sonos 5 just needs two power points on each side of the soundstage and you're good to go. The bass doesn't require any form of integration and you don't have to worry about placing the Sub in the right position to get the best sub integration with the Sonos ones. The upside of this that you might not have considered is that the bass is actually coming from both sides. Note that the sub mini is just going to be the two six inch woofers for the bass, but for the fives, you have three four inch woofers, what three in each speaker. So on both sides, you're going to have a total of six bass drivers and they are evenly spread across the sound stage. This is like stereo bass as opposed to all the bass signals coming from one point in the Sub Mini when it's paired with the Sonos Ones. Now, speaking of the bass drivers, this directly impacts the amount of bass that you're going to get. Now, bass is about moving air, and to move air, you need surface area, which is why subwoofers are always big and heavy because the magnets to drive the bigger bass drivers, they are 
of course heavier. Now, consider this. For base duties in the Sonos One setup with the Sub Mini, you will have one three and a half inch drivers in each of the Sonos Ones, and the Sub has two six inch drivers. Now in the Sonos Fives, there are three four inch drivers in each speaker. So in a stereo pair, you will get a total boom making area of six bass drivers. Now you need to work out some of the math here, so do bear with me. Now first, let's calculate the area of the Sonos One setup with the Sub Mini. Now the area of each bass driver in the Sonos One is pi times radius squared. Now radius in the case of the 3.5 inch woofer will be 1.75 inches. So you will take 3.14 multiplied by the square of 1.75, which will give you 9.6 square inches. I didn't work it out on the fly, I actually calculated it before this. Now, and for the pair of them, you will arrive at 19.2 square inches from the Sonos One's drivers. Now for the subwoofer, the six inch woofers will have a radius of three inches. So to get the area, you will square three inches and then multiply that by 3.14 and that will give you 28 and a quarter square inches. A pair of them in the sub mini, there are two, right? It will give you 56 and a half square inches. So the total base making area of the base drivers is 75.7 square inches. Now let's get to the Sonos Fives. There are a total of six base drivers in a Sonos 5 stereo setup. Each of these drivers, they are four inches, so radius is two inches. You square that and multiply by 3.14, which will give a total area of 12.56 square inches for each of the drivers. And you multiply that by six for a total area of the base drivers coming in at 75.36 square inches. Now, math is over. Let's compare the square areas for both setups. Yep, they are almost exactly the same. The Sonos One with the Sub Mini setup, 75.7 square inches, just a hair bigger than the total base surface area for the Sonos 5 setup, which comes in at 75.4 square inches. Now, if we don't split hair here, we can effectively assume that they both have the same surface area to help produce bass. So technically, they should produce the same amount of bass, no? But bass is not so simple. There's also the cabinet design, as well as the amplification power and the damping factor that will all come in to impact the amount and the quality of bass that you are getting. Now, in the case of the Sonos 5s, there will be no phasing issues caused by the subwoofer placement. Why? Because the bass notes are effectively coming from where the mids and the trebles are coming from because they're not physically placed in another cabinet like the sub, right? As I have mentioned before, the left channel bass notes are produced by the left woofers and the right channel bass notes are produced by the right woofers. Now, this is why the Sonos 5s will produce better, tighter and more integrated sounding bass. But don't just take my word for it. We will get to the frequency response sweeps and you can see the proof for yourself in just a little bit. But before that, let's get to the downsides of the Sonos 5s. The fives have, they have no onboard mic, meaning to say you will not get any form of voice assistant, not even the Sonos voice assistant. And there isn't a version of the Sonos fives which has a mic either. Now the Sonos One SL, yes, they have the original version, which is the non-SL, so just called the Sonos One. They have a mic in each of the speaker. So it is a smart speaker, smarter speaker, smart speaker, because this guy is not smart. So even if you factor in the mic, the pair of Sonos Ones will cost $40 more than a pair of Sonos One SL. Not to mention, you don't actually need both to be ones. One of them can be an SL, so incremental is just $20. And speaking about the price, that is the second downside, price. Now the fives used to cost a $499 each and you got yourself a kick-ass stereo system for just one grand. Now there was a price bump which brought the price up to $1,100 for the stereo pair. The Sonos One SL cost $199 each and the Sub Mini cost $429, meaning to say the entire 2.1 setup sets you back $830, which is $270 less than the five setup. Now, even if you opt for the ones with the mic, which you only need one, then the other one can be an SL. You are looking at just another $20 more, which means to say you are still saving $250 from the Sonos 5 setup. So it boils down to, are you getting 22% more sound if you're spending 22% more on the sound system? 
to answer the question, we will then queue in the frequency response chart. Now, the first frequency response chart that we're looking at here is that of the Sonos ones packed in stereo without the sub mini, and that's in white. Now, this measurement is taken with my standardized mic placement setup, which I've permanently mounted into my studio in the ceiling. You can't see it now. I'm zooming in specifically to the bass section, which is what we are focusing on today. The frequency response between 200 hertz will see the curve tailing off. Now, note that the curve has been smoothed out for the ease of visualization, but in general, it's gonna give you a pretty good idea. The bass response is lacking, right? if you don't have a sub pad to this. From about 150 hertz or so, you're gonna get a lot less and less bass until you can't hear much bass at all. Not the most inspiring curve, but hey, you can't expect a lot from just a pair of 3.5 inches bass drivers, can you? Now next, we will cue in the Sonos 5, which is represented by the rate curve. Now, right off the bat, you'll notice that the bass response is much, much better, much louder. Now, in fact, even at down to 20 hertz, which is on the left of the chart, you're still going to be hearing some audible bass notes. Now, this is pretty amazing for a pair of stereo speakers, even without a sub. But if you ask anyone with a pair of Sonos 5s, they will tell you, you will get all the bass that you want out of a stereo setup. And it's evidently proven here in the measured frequency response charts, the fives deliver in the bass department. Now, at this point, I do hope that you have found value in the work that I've done to measure out these setups and these speakers. It is my desire to bring you information which not many others are telling you. If you would like to support my work, you can do so by scanning the QR code, which I'm going to be placing maybe here, and it will bring you to my Patreon account where you can contribute to my coffee fund. Now, the easier way of doing this, of course, is to click the Super Thanks button right on the YouTube channel here below this video so you can buy me a cup of coffee, just one-time coffee, right? Now, the last curve to bring in is the curve in green, right? The green curve will represent the Sonos ones with a sub mini pad to it. Now, predictably, this will augment the bass from the Sonos ones. Now, if you compare it to the white curve of the Sonos ones, Without the sub mini, you will see that it is boosting the bass from below 150 hertz all the way down to 20 hertz as measured in the frequency response suite. Now, when I toggle on and off the sub mini while I was testing, it really shows how much of a difference the sub mini brings to the Sonos ones. But you will also notice that the sub mini still doesn't help the Sonos one get out as much bass as the pair of Sonos 5s. Now the red curve representing the Sonos 5 is still a good 3 dB ahead of the Sonos 1s with the sub mini between about 20 and 70 Hertz or so. Now in other words, you are getting more bass with the Sonos 5s even without a sub woofer, more than the ones with the sub mini. So this difference between the green and the red curve is actually what you're getting for about $270 for the setup, right? The difference between the two setups. So if you're watching this video to consider purchasing either setup, you will belong to one of three groups, maybe, I'm just thinking. First group, you have neither of this setup and you're wondering which to go for. Second group, you have the fives and you're wondering whether swapping to the lower cost setup will bring you as good, if not better sound. Now the third group is you have the ones and wondering if you should just add the sub mini or you should just spring for the Sonos 5s a pair and replace the ones setup. Now, I have recommendation for all three groups. Now, for those of you in the first group and you have neither setup, my recommendation, go for the ones with the sub mini. Why? Because there is flexibility in doing so. The sub mini can be deployed to a Sonos soundbar or pad with any other system, right? And you are saving $270 while doing so and coming really close to the performance of the Sonos 5s, which costs in excess of $1,100. Now, for those of you in the second group and already have the Sonos 5s, stay there.
don't move. Don't itchy backside and try this setup out because the fives are phenomenal and already have a much better sound than the setup of combination of the Sonos ones with the Sub Mini. Unless, of course, you have the space constraint that set in after you bought the Sonos 5s and you can't house the Sonos 5s anymore because these speakers, the Sonos 1s, are going to be a lot smaller than the Sonos 5s and you can just tuck the Sonos Sub Mini somewhere else in the corner of the room. Now, for those of you in the third group and already have the Sonos 1s, wondering whether to gun straight for the Sonos 5s or at the Sonos Sub Mini, Go for the Sub Mini, right? The flexibility is high here and you just need to spend another $429 without having to replace the entire setup of the Sonos Ones. And yet, you will still retain the flexibility of redeploying the Sub Mini into other setups or even putting this entire combination towards building up a home theater setup with the sound bars from Sonos or even the Sonos M. Now, of course, if budget is not a constraint and you are able to add more and more speakers to your house without your other half complaining, then by all means, go for the Sonos 5. They are still the best sounding setup that you can get for the money, even if they are a little bit more expensive than this setup here. Now, this video is one that is long overdue. I had wanted to do it months ago when the Sub Mini launched. It's just that so many other videos got in the way and renovations to build up this studio happened. So thanks for being patient and I hope to have helped you get some clarity on this issue. Now, the Sonos 5s are still the king of the hill when it comes to stereo setup for music. So for those of you who are wondering if a pair of the Sonos 1s is better than a single Sonos 5, so two of these versus one of these, maybe you can check out this video right here. And I've done that video about two years ago when I compared a Sonos 5 with a pair of Sonos Play 1s, the older Play 1s. The Play 1s are like 10 years old now, getting a little bit long in the tooth. And even the newer ones, these ones here, are getting a little bit stale by today's standards. Something new, hopefully, is coming really soon. Maybe the rumored Optimo, which can possibly replace the Sonos 1s. So stay tuned and I'll see you over in that video.